Yeah, we're, we're very proud of being one of the founding cities for C40. And I think this conference, you know, some 10 years on since it was first founded, it's quite an exciting moment. It's, uh, we have our first chair from the global south and from the developing world. And when we think about the potential cities have, we are increasingly urbanizing, moving towards 70% of the population. And that is mainly in the developing world. I mean, I come from a city, London, which is developing very fast for a Western city, and certainly the fastest in Europe by some distance. But compared to some developing cities, that pales into, into insignificance. So when you think about the proportion of action that can be taken, it's clearly very important that we engage in the developing world. So it's great to be here in Johannesburg um, and also to have a new chair also from the south. Well, the, the best example we have is some of our energy retrofitting programs. So uh, London's buildings, it's an old city, are, are many of them are Victorian, are very leaky. They're incredibly energy inefficient and uh, energy prices are becoming quite an issue uh, in the UK. So it's very important we try and mitigate that by um, making, putting in energy efficient measures. Uh, and we, through the C40, we set up some of the programmes that are now delivering the biggest retrofit scheme London's ever seen. So something called um, Refit, which is a programme to retrofit our public sector buildings, was on very much with the C40, seeing what other cities had done, seeing what other ideas. So we didn't have to reinvent that wheel and drive that programme forward. And it's now so successful, in fact, that the central UK government is wanting to roll that out across the UK. Well, it's so that we don't have to reinvent the wheel, effectively, and that's what it boils down to. We don't have to spend lots of time and money uh, and effort working out solutions to problems that lots of us already face and lots of us have already turned our attentions to. So we can show our experiences on congestion charging and uh, those kind of mechanisms, but equally cities can share with us their experience on, for example, I said earlier, energy retrofit. Well, I mean, I was quite, um, I've not seen BRT in action before. Um, I, I, many South American countries are, are introducing them. I've not actually seen it. I saw it yesterday um, on the way to the uh, Apartheid Museum. And that's a very interesting idea. I think the practical difficulties of London streets, which are very narrow, they aren't very wide, might make that difficult. But we are, have new developments which are coming forward. There's always potential for that. And I think that is worth a look. It's much cheaper and quicker to install than a new tram line or very, very expensive underground lines. But um, equally, when it comes to things that London could take away, I'm sure there's lots that we could, we could offer. I mean, Johannesburg is also developing very fast and as is London, um, but it's already a city that is, you know, it's been here for a hundred and or so years. So it's a matter of also, I think, retrofitting some of the older stuff you have, but also looking forward to new development. And that's very much the same problems London has. And I'm sure there's a great deal that we could share. Well, the mayor, uh, we hosted the C40 Siemens um, Climate Leadership Awards back in September, and he gave a, a speech in which he, he bigged up London's green economy, but he also said shamelessly, I will steal any good idea that you guys come up with. And that, of course, is what C40 is up to. And the mayor understands that, that this agenda is about improving the quality of life for our citizens, for our residents. And since these are all politicians, they want to be elected and re-elected, that, their bread and butter is to improve the quality of life, to reduce their costs through energy efficiency measures, to, to reduce their costs by having new locally generated energy, which is cheaper than and more reliant than stuff off the main grid. And um, this is very much what, how, what, the, what Boris's agenda is. And the co-benefit of that is huge carbon dioxide reductions. Well, it takes its time. I would say that London, um, from a very low base 10 years ago, um, has, has done well. And the whole, in fact, the UK has done quite well at raising from an embarrassing amount of recycling to a not embarrassing recycling. But there's still a long way to go. I think it's a long cultural thing. You can get the long, low-hanging fruit, people who are engaged quite easily. But once you get to difficult properties, it's quite hard. So old flats, which don't have the infrastructure for recycling. But it is a lot of engagement. And I think a lot of it has got to be a financial imperative, in fact. So the amounts of money you can save through your local taxes, as it would be in the UK council tax, through more sensible uh, disposal of waste. So using it as a resource rather than sticking it in the ground or, or, or burning it. And I think that's probably the best way into people's pockets, realistically. I think we have to um, see more expansion into more developing cities where the new economies are growing. So it's great that we announced today that uh, Cape Town 
Nairobi and Dar es Salaam have joined the network. These are cities with more than three million people. These are cities which are the powerhouses of, of their regions in, in Africa. And we need to have more cities like that, but uh, also in China and in India and place a developing world where the, the future, frankly, is lying. I, I represent a very fast growing city in Europe. You know, we are growing very, very quickly for our history. But compared to some of these ones I just named, it's quite insignificant. So um, that's where the excitement is. And as we become more urbanized, the potential for C40 to work together to improve our economies, to make us healthier and wealthier places, and mitigate and adapt to climate change, that's where it is. Because our national governments are further away from the people and aren't as responsible and often buried, frankly, in international negotiations. But mayors and city governments are just, are just getting on with it. Well, um, on the buildings retrofit one, we are very much involved in. We have quite a lot of work to do in London with our Victorian buildings, which are energy efficient. That's one of them. We are, are going to be leading the district energy one. So we want to have, we have a target for 25% of London's energy to be generated locally by 2025. That's quite a challenging target to meet. We're looking further forward with our population growth in London and with national energy policy. Um, perhaps not quite meeting the needs, energy needs of the future uh, in the UK. You know, the mayor can't stand by and let that happen. So we want to see more district energy, and that's a, a network we will be um, co-leading on. Um, climate positive project. So we have a development very close to City Hall in London uh, around the Elephant and Castle, which is our first climate positive development in the UK. And um, I know President Clinton has been quite interested in that project as well. And we hope that uh, there'll be more of those um, going forward. We are part of the Connecting Delta Cities as a, a, a city living um, existing on the sea and we had a very interesting meeting yesterday chaired by the Mayor of Rotterdam which was about uh, moving that network forward and obviously we've seen some pretty spectacular weather events and there's a weather event going on in the UK right now not affecting London directly but just a few miles away there's been some pretty bad flooding because of atrocious weather we've had about two months where we've had um, six months of rain fall in a very short amount of time and clearly um, not managing that very well. Um, and then there's a the green growth. We very much see that um, this is an economic, economic argument, um, the, climate, the uh, taking climate action agenda. So we are in that. We, our own green economy is growing 4 or 5% a year. It employs around two, up to sorry, about 160,000 people in London. That's growing towards 200,000 quite soon. And we feel that is very much part of the message we want to send. You know, it's not about, it's not about wanting to live in a cave, it's about wanting to um, you know, in, enjoy the lifestyle we have now, but in a more environmentally sustainable way. And then the electric vehicles and um, more low emission vehicles as well. We have an air quality problem in addition to wanting to address our um, carbon emissions. So we're pulling all the leaves we can to stimulate the low emission vehicle market. And that is also something we're um, my officers and I are involved in. That was a very long answer. I, <laughs>